Hi, welcome to week 15. This is the last full week of classes and this video won't be too long, but I wanted to go over a few things. So we're all done with Revel reading, so you don't have any reading this week. Uh, we're also done with extra credit, so I won't accept any more extra credit. I also won't accept any more late assignments other than the tutor review, because I know some of you are still waiting on um, tutors to get back to you, which is fine. Just send them to me when you get them. I'm really concerned that you get a tutor review, especially on this last paper, so that you can look at the suggestions they give you to write a better paper. I read all the suggestions when I receive your paper, and I, I don't know if I've ever said, don't do what the tutor says. I usually completely agree with the things that they notice. So this week, you want to review the essay for prompt sheet. Since your essay is due this week, the final essay, you want to make sure you have everything in there. So uh, I would read this and, and read through this, but to be sure you have everything in your essay, you might look at this basic outline grading rubric. So it talks says to have an introduction, of course. Uh, with an attention grabber explanation of issue or background. And then the thesis, be, you know, be sure your thesis is clear. Body paragraphs that support your position, present and support the reasons for your position by using sufficient, varied, meaning multiple sources, and relevant evidence effectively that is properly cited and ties those reasons to evaluate your belief held by your audience, which is college, college students. So you want to appeal to college students as you're writing this paper. One thing I've noticed is that some of you, when you paraphrase, fail to insert an in-text citation, and that's critical. Anytime I see a number, a stat, a year in a paper, and there's no citation, I know that's plagiarized because you don't have all those facts in your heads. So be very careful that you cite everything that you have used in your paper that isn't your idea. You need a counter argument in this paper and an effective summary of the anticipated objections and views differing from your own that is fair and complete. So just what is the counter argument? What do people believe that don't agree with you? And then also in your counter argument, we did act to take, to go back one sec. We did this as homework. We also did this as homework. And that is a response to this counter argument about why your position is stronger or why you agree with this counter argument up to a point, but it went, you know, there comes a point where you don't agree anymore. You also are going to have something talking about logical fallacies. This is usually in this counter argument assignment where I will see students talk about how, you know, not only is this argument weak, but they've committed this logical fallacy. If you do not have this portion of the required paper about logical fallacies, you're going to lose a whole grade because this is a, a really important assignment in this essay. You need a conclusion that's effective and brings your essay to closure. And this should not just be a summary of your paper. Uh, in many cases for a, a research paper like this, you'd want to tell your audience, what do you want them to do? After they've read your whole paper and you've made this whole argument, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to go out and buy something or go protest something or look into some, something further? You need to tell them what you want them to do and be sure you have a works cited page. So let's take a look at works cited pages. Here's, here's a sample of an MLA documentation that's in this week's material. So it's this item right here. And what I'm concerned with is this. Your works cited page should look just like this. So the first and ent the entries are all in alphabetical order. Uh, the reason for this three dash entry is that it's another item by Freud. So the first one is by uh, Freud, Sigmund, 
and it's called Creative Writers. The second one is by Freud Sigmund. So you just put those dashes and it's called The Ego and the Id. So the reason why this one is first and this one is second is because C starts before E. So you then, if you have two things by the same author, then you move alphabetically to the title. It, otherwise, all everything is listed alphabetically by the author. If you have illustrations, you just list them in here. You just put wherever it falls on this works cited page is where it goes. The other thing is the format. You have to have the first word flush left and then all the rest of these entries are tabbed over once to the right. And this is going to cost people points because I don't know how many times I have written on papers, do not put bullet points in front of these, do not put them all flush left, do not single space them. These in your works cited page needs to look just like this. So be sure you read the prompt sheet. Be sure you look at this documentation. Again, here's your final draft drop box. And this, we just went over the checklist here and the discussion post this week is about uh, what do you think was the most valuable writing tactic or technique you learned this semester? How might this help you with the writing you will do academically and professionally? And it goes on to say, as I often say, college writing is important because you have to write your way out of college via the WST. So you had this practice WST. I gave you some feedback on this. And then it goes on to say, but professionally, you will engage in the same kind of writing. Administration of justice and medical graduates will have to do extensive research to solve crimes and diagnose patients as will computer and business majors, hospitality majors, teachers, salespeople, etc. Being aware of rhetoric is essential to getting people to believe or do what you would like them to believe or do. A business major uses ethos and logos to get customers to buy a product. A computer major needs to practice logic or his or her program won't work. So this is what I want you to think about when you do that initial post. And then when you respond to your classmates, I'm asking you to think about how does your learning experience compare with your peers? So the big thing you have to do this week is your final paper, your discussion post, get your tutor review turned in if you if you're still waiting for it. And that's about it. So if you have any questions about anything, please contact me. Um, you will be getting an email from the school about evaluations. Those are really important. The school takes those really seriously. They're, um, I put them on the schedule for next week, but I know they released them. I think they released them last week. I know they, they're out this week anyway. So if you get that email, please do respond to it. The school does take them seriously. And uh, in an online class, I don't have a, a section of class where I say, okay, we're going to take the next 10 minutes, which is what I do in face-to-face -face classes to fill out your evaluations. So all I ask you to do with the evaluation is to just be honest. I have, I asked about, I did want to give you extra credit for filling them out. And then you send me, but the, the uh, department head said, no, I could not do that. Anyway, I would appreciate it if you did fill out the evaluations. And like I say, if you have any questions, please email me.